I'm all about the good vibes, the good vibes. We bout to have a good time, a good time. Leave my problems all behind, all behind. We living out the good life, the good life, yeah. I ain't gotta worry about a thing. Oh no. Had some obstacles I overcame. Oh yeah. You don't have to ever be the same. Oh no. Cause when we change the mind, we change the game. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Kenny Clutch, with another episode on the Clutch Vision Podcast. I got a very honorable, special guest in the building, Mr. I Wanna Rock Right Now. I'm Rob Bass, and I came to get down. It's in the building today. This is very, very rare. My my man Rob don't really do interviews like that, so you know a brother got to be special to get him on. I've been trying to get this man on for the past like six months, <laughs> trying to get him on. Big Rob Bass, what's going on, OG? How you doing? I'm good, hanging in there, can't complain, just feeling blessed, not stressed, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. How's the family man. doing during the quarantine, brother? Everybody good, man. They hanging in there, you know, all this family time. I'm loving it, I'm loving it. That's what's up, man. This is this is crazy, right? This is unreal. I mean, we were just chopping it up just now. You know, and you was just sharing your thoughts on how you would never think you would see something like this in your lifetime, right? Not in my lifetime. You know, this is like straight out of a, a sci-fi movie to me. You know, it's unbelievable that that we are going through this at this time. You know, because I mean, I mean, we've seen a lot of stuff like this on movies before, but in, to go through this in real life is a whole different thing, man. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy, man. Like, you know, you go to the supermarket or you go in, like, the toilet paper gone. Like, everything <laughs> is just wiped out. It looked like the whole apocalypse or something like that <laughs> just came up in here. Yeah, scary, man. It's scary, man. I mean, yeah. when I went in the supermarket the other day, you know, everybody spread out. And it's just, like, it just feels weird. It feels yeah. real weird to just be out and then see how people... Looking at you, you looking at them. We try not to get too close. I mean, it's just it's crazy. Yeah. How you think it's gonna come? Easy out? right now. How you think it's gonna be when we come out of it, though? You think you? Think oh man, I, I I don't think it'll ever be the same. Not for a long, mm-hmm. long time, man. You know, yeah. it's gonna be a lot of social distancing for a long time. You know. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man, because it put people on edge. You know. Yeah, man. I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm just waiting to see some zombies outside. <laughs> then I'm going to be like, oh, man. Right. <laughs> That's the Facts. next level right there. Facts, man. Well, let's jump right into it, man. So the people want to know, you know what I'm saying? And I want to know personally, because this is going to be a good history lesson for me, because I'm, I love hip hop. You know, I'm, you know, obviously, you know, I, I dance for you as well, too. You know what I mean? So I'm like super, super into hip hop, into music. Been to the club plenty of times, and every time I go to the club, your song plays every time your joint stay in rotation, you mm-hmm. know. But I know Rob Bass at, at, at his height, but a lot of people want to know Rob Bass version number one. Like, how did you get started in, in the rap game, in the music, in the music industry, period? Well, when I first started out, I used to watch this group from around my projects where I used to live at in New York. It was called Lincoln Projects. That's where I grew up at. And there was a, a group out called the Crash Crew at the time. And they was out, they was like one of the first old school groups out there. You know, they had, you know, they used to come out, bring their equipment outside in the park, throw their little jams out in the park. And I, as a little kid, I used to watch them all the time. And I was like, yo, these, these dudes are, are dope, man. You know, I just, you know, I was feeling it, the hip hop scene. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then came out this record called um, Rapper's Delight. By the sugar yes. Hill game. Yes. So once I heard that, I was like, oh man, this is something I want to do. You know, I was right, like, oh, right. this is this is it right here. And then right behind that comes Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five come out. <laughs> and then I think right after that was the group from around my neighborhood. They come mm-hmm. out with a record called High Power Rap. And I was like, oh. So that made me feel like oh i could do this too you know what i'm saying facts they from 
they from where I'm from, you know? So that gave me the motivation. So I basically started, you know, carrying equipment, carrying equipment, you know, just trying to hang around those type of guys, you know? And the next thing, you know, I met up with um, Dougie Fresh and his crew, right. Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh crew, you know? Tried to hang around. I was hanging around with them a little bit, you know, and um, Dougie, first DJ Chill Will actually produced my first record I ever made. Ah. It's called DJ Interview. Okay. And a lot of people didn't know that. I had I had like two other records before it takes two. Wow. It came out, you know. So mm. yeah. So that's how I really got in. I was just hanging around the people that did what I wanted to do. So I stayed in and with them, you know. Right. Right. And I heard and I heard you you and you and uh you and Biz. I used to uh I used to hand out flyers back in the day on on 125th. Yeah, me and Biz used to, we, you know, we used to hand out flyers for Mike and Dave. That was a um, promoter. They were big promoters in Harlem. And they used to do shows all over the Bronx, New York, Jersey, wherever. You know, they was big promoters for the, the hip-hop game. Mm-hmm. Me and Biz, we used to give out flyers because we were trying to get on. You right, know, we right. to do this. So we had to give out the flyers in exchange for, you know, giving out flyers and putting in the footwork. They would let us get on the mic, you know. They would mm-hmm. let us get on the mic and rock and then eventually we start getting on flyers you know dang that's dope that's dope so so yeah so let me so let me ask you this question like so who are your some of your favorite mcs coming up like top, like if you had like a top let's say like a top 10 because i know it's a it's a gang of cats that's like that's nasty but if you had to pick you know who was your favorite two who were they uh my, my favorite two from whatever like from when i any, wanted to start or yeah, like when any, I was in it? Yeah, any era, like, you know, when you wanted to start and then, you know, when you well, was in it and, and even now, if you had well, to first, a couple cats. When I first started, I, I you know, I was into Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, so I liked um, Melly Mel from mm-hmm. the Furious Five, and I also liked... Um, Kumo D from the Treacherous Three. Those two cats were like, they was the illest on the mic at the time, you know. Nobody could mess with them cats, you know. Right, and, right. And my era coming up, though, when I was coming out, though, you know, I, like I always got the utmost respect for Dougie Fresh because he taught me a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And also, I, you know, I like cats like Rakim. Rakim was doing his thing, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Those are Kane, Big Daddy Kane. Of course. You know, those were the guys that I had to look up to, you know? Right, that's dope, man. Yeah, man, cause some of my, like, I, I got put on, um, you know, uh, Big Daddy Kane and, and, and Rakim, um, one of my OGs, my man, my man Bless, who's from, who's from New York. And he used to, he used to put me on, on him, uh, you know, Cool Mo D, uh, Cool G Rap. Like, he really put me on G Rap. Like, when G Rap was, was spitting, I was just like, oh, snap. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the way that he was rhyming, Back then, it, it just seemed like it was like unheard of, like the way that, that he was flowing, and I was just so into this in, into his lyrics or whatever. I'm like, dang, yo, like his flow, everything, like delivery, everything was like super, super tough, man. Yeah, the G Rap was he, he G Rap was a beast. He was yeah. a beast in the game. You know, he was definitely a beast. Yeah, true, true. So let, let me ask, let me ask you this question. So you. Some your the most popular record, you know, that everybody knows is 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 it takes two, you know what I'm saying? But of course you had four other, you know, top ten records, you know what I'm saying, that 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 hit the charts. And you know, you had joint yeah, joy and pain as well, too, which is a lot everybody's favorite. Any cookout, that joint is playing straight up and down. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But but tell us, but tell us how did the legendary song It Takes Two come about? Well, when we when we came up with that, man. The record was basically kind of there because we had to go in the studio that night and me and Easy Rock ain't have nothing done. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Mm-hmm. So we went to one of our homeboys' house and we listening to break beats because he had like mad break beats. Crates, crates, crates of record. So we just listening to some, we listening to some. And then he played uh, the Lynn Collins sample for us. And I was like, yo, that joint is hot right there. Yeah. And then Easy Rock liked another sample from another record. And we was like, yo, that's hot too. Mm-hmm. All right, man, we just going to see what we can do with both. We, we ain't know that we was going to wind up blending them two together to make right. it takes two, you know. Right. We was just thinking, oh, we going to pick one or the other. But we wind up, we was able 
to blend both records mm -hmm. to come up with it takes two it was crazy that's crazy so wait so so how did y'all come up with with the uh because the machinery was different back then like technology you know today <laughs> and back then was completely different so what what did y'all have to go through in order to get that record and get the sample off the record and all of that how was that well, back then we used sampling with, I think we was using the SB-1200 at that time. It was just a sampler. I'm, I'm not even sure it was that, but you know, we used the sampler and then we had the engineer build the under track. So he built the under track and, and, and threw, threw the sample in there. Then we added bass on top of the bass that was already there, added hi-hats and we you know we added around it to make it come whole. You know what I'm saying? Cause it, it I don't, I don't, it was just amazing how that record came together, man. Mm. Cause when, once, when we was in the studio and I went home and I was listening to it on a cassette tape back right. then, it was a cassette tape. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening to it, I'm like, yo, this joint right here is dope. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, man, I got to come up with some rhymes for this joint now. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So right. I went home. Mm -hmm. so, so I went home. I, I had some rhymes that was pretty much already written. And uh -huh. it fit perfect. So I was like, damn, this thing is fitting perfect right here. So I went, we went back to the studio, dropped the rhymes, and that was it. History. Damn. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, yo. Cause I yo, that that record, yo, I think I probably put it in maybe like four or five different recital dances in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like just, you know, just giving my giving my kids that work, man. And it's just like it's an amazing song. And every time I, you know, the funny story is. I'll sit there and be like, um, I'm like, yeah, you guys know, y'all know Rob Bass, y'all know Rob Bass. And, they, and my kids, this generation, they'd be like, who? I'm like, y'all know who? Rob Bass, right. <laughs> I'll be like, and then I'll sit, and then I'll spit the lyric, yo, I want to rock right now. Oh, and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's who y'all, that's who y'all dancing to. That's, that's who your teacher dances for as well, too, man. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing how, like, your music is just so, it's just so timeless. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it just it's made for every generation and it's still getting you still getting buzz off of it today and you still working off of that off off of these records that like how important is longevity you know to you and, and to young artists today if you can give them any inspiration at all you know how important is, is having that longevity and having something that sticks well it's, it's definitely really important you know because a lot of rappers from my era you don't even hear their songs anymore they was hot at the time but you don't hear these songs you don't hear about them anymore nothing like that but i mean to the younger cats that's coming out you know it's very important i think to have your own type of sound you know to have your own sound and be I, I think it's important to be original because if you don't be original when as the time go on you're going to sound like everybody else from that era and then people are going to forget about you and go to the next dude you know Right. So you got to have your own style, have your own, you know, swag or whatever you want to call it today mm -hmm. and do you, you know what I'm saying? Don't come out here trying to be uh, whoever's hot right now. Cause that's, cause later they, he, that dude that that's known for that is going to be the one that's hot. You might have a high record, but you ain't going to stick around for the long term, you know? Right. Facts. Facts. Now, let me ask you this though, because a lot of MCs today, you know, they don't really have the DJ. I mean, they got a DJ on, on stage with them, but back then, you know, it was you and Easy Rock. So how important was the DJ, you know, and the MC collectively together back then? And to me, that that's like the essence of, of, of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you could talk a little bit about how important the, the DJ was to, to the game. Well, back in my era, the DJ was like, kind of the main, the main part was the DJ back in the day. You know what I'm saying? When you're going out, to these parties to perform, the DJ got to be on point, or else your show is going to look horrible. Mm. You know, so that's why, like back in the days, you had like the Flash and the Furious Five because it did, it always, you, you also had like Africa Bambada and the Soul Sonic Force right. because the DJ is, was was the focus point. You know? mm. But then my era coming in. It started to even out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you still had, you know, you had Eric B, Rock Kim, Rob Basie, Rock, you had, you know, groups like that. But the MC was starting to be 
the vocal point then. You know, everybody was focusing on the, the MC more at that time. But, you know, but the DJ was definitely important. The DJ is hip hop, you know? Right, facts, facts, man. Dang. Rob Bass over here dropping bombs, y'all. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, comment below. Share this with your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your auntie. You know what I'm saying? Your great grandma. You know what I'm saying? Like your stepmom, your stepdad, your step uncle. I don't care who it is. Your coworker. Somebody needs to hear this right mm -hmm. now. Y'all know this. Y'all know his music. Y'all know these records. You know what I mean? Stop playing with me. It's your boy Kenny Clutch. Make sure you go ahead and click that bell if you're watching this on YouTube right now. Now, Rob, I want to I want to ask you this, man. The video, you know, it takes two, or just videos in general back in the day. A lot of people had like the whole neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? In in the video, in your your video, it takes two, you had like it looked like you had the whole your whole hood in that joint. So tell me how the video came about. Well, that was like well at the time the record was popping. Right. Especially in the streets, but it, it was popping, but the record company didn't want to give us a video. Okay. So we we took our own money mm. and we was like, all right, man, we got to shoot a video for this thing, man. So we put our put our money together and we um got the guy to get a cam. The guy had a camera and we went down to 125th Street in Harlem mm. and just start shooting. Right. Just like that, just start shooting. No idea what we doing, and it just came out the way it came out. It was crazy, you know. People joined in. They dancing in the street with us and. We see Bismarcky across the street. He come over and get the video. DJ Red Alert. He walking down the street, come across, get the video. It was like none of it was scripted. It just happened the way just it happened. was, you know. It was straight raw. Dang. Straight raw. <laughs> Cause y'all had y'all had no Instagram back then. <laughs> nah, we ain't had no Instagram, so nobody ain't know what we was, that we were shooting the video. It was just they was just out there, you know, Harlem on 125th Street. People was right. always out there, you know. So. Right. It just happened. It just happened and came out, you know what I'm saying? And I saw you I saw you busting a couple dance moves up in that joint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to do a little dancing back in the day. A little bit, a little bit. A little bit. That's what's up, man. So I wanna I wanna jump into something else real quick, man. Like, you know, we we you know the obviously we're in a we're in quarantine, we're in a pandemic and everything, and a lot of people are truly, you know, they're in fear. They're, they're scared, they, they don't know what they're gonna do. A lot of people losing their jobs, losing work, the economy is taking a major hit, you know what I'm saying? But, for, you know, through, you've lived through a few different generations, a, a few different uh, recessions, you know what I'm saying, as well too. Um, in your experience, you've maintained so much success. What has been the, the keys to success in your career and, and, and for those that um, are listening, how can they apply that same mentality? Well, I mean, life is about ups and downs. I don't care how you, you know, how you want to spin it. There's good times, there's bad times, but, you know, ho hopefully most of the time the good outweigh the bad. So you just got to stick in there and, and, man, and just, just look, just look for better things, you know, that's coming. Cause they are coming. Right. These these are hard times right now, but we gonna get through it. Yeah. And then we gonna be sitting here talking later about, oh man, remember when the pandemic was here? You know, yeah. we gonna get through it. You know, don't worry yeah. yourself to death and go crazy. You know, right. you just gotta you know sit it out, and we gonna get through it. Yeah. Pray, and that's that's all. That's all I can say. Pray. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I tell people all the time, you gotta make sure you got a strong prayer life, baby, because. You know, if you ain't got that right now, that's that's your foundation, especially right now. But then, yep. it was you know what's crazy, though, is that, like, we get to a point where, okay, something bad happened all the time, right? And then we start praying, right? And then as soon as that joint over and everything, and it's, and it's clear, right, then we go back to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we go back mm -hmm. to, to, to what we used to do what we used to do yeah yeah i mean that that always happens you know but i mean it was just like you know i look at it like when 9 11 happened you know when 9 11 happened everybody was scared and i mean you had a right to be scared because you didn't know what the heck was, was going on but you know yeah we got through that you know we'll be all right i think i mean i know we're gonna be all right i know we're gonna be all right you know facts yeah, definitely, man. Like I, I tell people all the time, man. You know, it's it's all about you know when you change the mind, you change the game. It's all with your mentality. 
You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure that you stay positive at all times. You can't sit here and panic. You, like, just don't panic. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, just know that we're going we gonna to push through this and we're going to get to that next level. I mean, right now, they should just throw on your records. You know what I'm saying? They get through it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to so It's wanna, all about staying positive. Yeah. All about yeah, staying no. positive. Now, now and, and speaking of positivity, you know, like, like back then, I felt like a lot of a lot of music back then was there was there was a lot of positivity that was going on. Like, I mean, it was kind of like a balance uh, of you know, you had your good, you had your bad, you had your party music. You know what I'm saying? But like, what was what was your drive, your motive? Because you always put out positive records. Well, I, I mean, I just wanted people to dance and have a good time, man. That, that was pretty much, you know, what I was around, like going to block parties and, and, and seeing, you know, artists perform and, and things like that. And I, I always wanted to be that party MC to make you feel good, you know, because back in my era, there were so many different styles and I didn't want to really be exactly like, like somebody else. I wanted my own type of thing. So that's, when I started mixing R and B with the hip hop, right? You know, so I, most of my songs we had a little R and B singing in it, and then the rap come in stuff like that. You know, other rappers were doing something different at the time. You know, so mm-hmm. I just tried to be different. You know, yeah, man, it's important to be different, everybody. To the youngins out there, it's important to be different. Don't go overboard, but be different. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you said don't go overboard, right? <laughs> yeah, some cats be going overboard with it. They be they be tripping. <laughs> You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But it's all but it's all good to each his own. But just, you know, just know who you're influencing at the end of the day. And that, I think, like, we got to be more aware of that. Like, people put out music and they trying to, you know, catch a hit and they, and they do it, you know, and, and not just music, just in general. People in general, we just got to be more aware of, of who we influencing and what we doing, you know. And I, that's why I appreciate your music so much because it just makes it's, it's feel good music. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no... Ain't no harm in it. Ain't no negativity going on. You just making people feel good at the end of the day. Yeah, that was the focus. You know, that was the focus. I ain't want to be out there, you know, saying nothing that I wouldn't do or nothing. You know what I mean? So I just try to keep it positive at all times, you know. And then it was a lot of kids that, you know, I see a lot of kids at the parties too. So that I always look at that too. You don't want to be saying crazy stuff to these kids, listening to that, and then, they grow up trying to do that. You right. know, they don't know that if they go out there and try to live that record, the outcome might not be good, you know? Facts. So, you know, I, that's why I always try to keep it positive. Facts, facts, man. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you this real quick. You know, like, again, like we, we during this pandemic right now, I asked everybody on the show the same question, right? If you had the whole world's attention right now during this quarantine, what encouraging words, you know, would you say to them to keep them uplifted? Well, I'll be, we basically said, I would just tell them, man, stay positive. We're going to get through it. You know, we went through 9-11. This is something even worse, but we're going to get through this too. You know, we're going to get through this too. So just stay positive and hug your loved ones, you know, keep them close to you and be safe out there. Be safe. Don't be out here partying because, you know, people still trying to go out and, and and go to their boy or girl house yeah. and hang out and nah, I don't do that right now. Stay with your family, chill out, be safe. Facts, facts, yo. Y'all heard, y'all heard, y'all heard the bass. Y'all heard the bass. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, I appreciate you coming on. But before we before we shut it down real quick, I got to I, I got to play this game with you. You down? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. We gonna play this game called In the Clutch. So in a clutch stands for inspirational dancers creatively linking upon the culture of hip hop. So yeah, <laughs> I get everybody with that. You know what I'm saying? I N D A C L U T C H. Inspirational dancers creatively linking upon the culture of hip hop. So it's a, a company that I started back in 2009 called In the Clutch, which then changed mm-hmm. into the Clutch Collective. So and now you know me being Kenny Clutch. You know, we're going to play this game called In the Clutch. So here we go. I'm going to give you a letter, and you give me a positive word. First thing that comes to your mind, <laughs> any letter that I give you. Cool? Nah, man. Nah. nah. Let's, let's try it. Let's try it. All right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. C. Hmm. Uh, 
something positive. Ah, cool. I don't know. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All right. L. Love. All right. You. Unity. Here we go. T. Uh, T. Hmm. That's a good one. Trust. Okay. That's that's came, that's what came in my mind. Trust. Here you go. This all good. C. C again. Mm. I don't know. I'm st I'm stuck with that C. I don't know why. <laughs> it's all good. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. We going we going I'm gonna I'm gonna put one in there for you. Courageous. All right. That that see that wasn't. <laughs> That's a perfect one. Give me that. I'll take that one. All right, here we go. Here we go. H. <laughs> Hopeful. Hopeful. That's clutch. That's clutch. That's clutch. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the legendary Rob Bass on the Clutch Vision podcast. Brother, we appreciate you coming out, man. Where can everybody find you at? You know what I'm saying? Shout out your Instagram, your Twitter, wherever they can find you at. Well, you can hit me at Rob Bass Music on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's Rob Bass Music. So hit me up, y'all. There it is. And it ain't no ain't no fix out there. You know what I'm saying? That's the real one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got the check mark next to it. That's how you know it's the real one. My man Rob Bass. Listen, he he performs everywhere, guys. Everywhere this man is performing, every single weekend, private events, you know what I mean? Uh uh basketball events, NBA, NFL. Wherever it's at, hockey, it don't matter where it's at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Rob, Rob Bass is there, and you probably going to catch me behind him or whatever a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Rocking with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So once again, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment below. You know what I mean? Share this with everybody that you can. Donate to the podcast to help us out. You know what I mean? Go ahead and, and, and subscribe to us on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts on YouTube. Go ahead and click that bell. Give me a thumbs up so I can go up to the recommended. It's your boy, Kenny Clutch. When we change the mind, we change the game. Remember, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow will worry about itself, and today is all we have. So go out and impact today with love, y'all. It's your boy, Kenny Clutch. My man, Rob Bates. We out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace.